Thai PBS English News Service. I'm Wing Tip Chuan Pawai. Officials continue to investigate the cause of the firework accident in Supanmeri last night. Despite the police believing the firework craze being kept too close to the display was the cause. Meanwhile, another explosion occurred at an artillery range in Nakhon Suwon province. There were no reports of injuries. This is the arms warehouse within the army's ordnance depot in the Konsawan Payuhakuri district. The blast occurred earlier today, but there were no reports of any death or injuries. Military officials claim the explosion was artillery shells waiting to be destroyed, which overheated as they were being transferred. Meanwhile, authorities continue to investigate the cause of the firework accident in Supanbuli last night. Police Major General Vira Budpo, Supanbri Police Commander, believes Tyler's canals were not the cause of the accident. It was more likely that a cargo of 4,000 rounds of fireworks kept near the display ignition site was ignited by sparks. This information coincides with Thai PBS sources, which confirmed there was a large amount of fireworks stacked nearby to be used on the following night. The governor of Supanbali ordered tonight's fly fireworks display near the Dragon Descendant Museum to be cancelled. Meanwhile, latest figures show the accident caused four deaths, 74 injuries and dozens of homes devastated, along with the ancient Silatana Mahathat Temple, which is part of the monastery. The province will be offering 25,000 baht to families of the death and 3,000 to 5,000 baht to the injured. Each house devastated by, a, by the blast will receive up to 20,000 baht in aid. The government has proposed the possibility of restructuring PTT and Thai Airways so that there will no longer be threat enterprises. Today, the labor unions announced that they disagree with the government and plan to visit the Ministry of Transport and Ministry of Finance this Friday. After a four-hour meeting between representatives of the labor unions of PTT, Thai Airways and the State Enterprise Workers Relations Confederations or the SERC, the conclusion is that they disagree with the transformation of PTT and Thai Airways. Sabit Gawan, the Secretary General of the SERC, confirmed that this Friday, the labor unions are going to the Ministry of Transport and the Ministry of Finance to show solidarity in opposing the government's plans to decrease by 2% their holding of PTT and Thai Airways stock and hand them to the Wayupak Fund. The exercise, according to the government, will help to decrease public debt. Savi said that governments claim that decreasing 2% of the stock holding will help lower public debt is not the right move, especially in the case of an energy giant like PTT, since it will affect Thai people and national energy policy as a whole. The labor unions are preparing to open a public stage on February 15th to give out information regarding the transformation of the state enterprises. They plan to invite Deputy Prime Minister Kitirat Naranong to join the event. Bank of Thailand or the BOT announced policy rate cut to 3% to boost up Thai economy. Meanwhile, Thirachai Puvanath Naranduban, former finance minister, had written on his Facebook page explaining that government has announced wrong debt per fiscal budget. Thirachai Puvanath Naranduban, former finance minister, has written on his Facebook page stating that the debt of 9.33% per fiscal budget has already included the interest of FIDF of 68 billion baht. If the government does not have to pay for the FIDF's interest, therefore the debt will be lower to 6.46% per fiscal budget, not reaching the limit of 15% of the fiscal budget. Thirachai suggested that Deputy Prime Minister Kitirat Naranong to further put this issue into consideration. He pointed out that it is necessary to review the fact of debt, not to deceive or give out wrong information, and that if the government used the actual number of debt, there would not be any problem to ask for more loan. He concluded that every baht and every stang has its value. There is no need to make the wrong statistic in order to get more loan. There is no value, and the government should not do that. 
Meanwhile, the BOT hoped to finalize with the Thai Bankers Association regarding the fee that need to co that the commercial banks have to pay to the Deposit Protection Agency or the DPA. Commercial banks have to adjust the transaction fee to support the emergency decree to transfer the debt of the FIDF. Pai Boon Kittisi Gangwan, the Secretary General of the Central Bank's Monetary Public Policy Committee, or the MPC, has cut the repurchase rate by 0.25 percent, point to the 3 percent, from the 3.25 percent. The new rate takes effect immediately. The Monetary Policy Panel believed that lowering the key policy rate to 3 percent was suitable to the current condition with the economy severely affected by the recent Great Flood. Associate Professor Montri Sohkadiyan Rurak from the National Institute of Development Administration, or NIDA, agrees that the government does need to issue the emergency decree to borrow 350 billion baht for water management systems. However, he stipulated that the government must clarify plans to be implemented in detail to show that transparency. Here's more. Uh, I think uh, we still have, uh, we don't need to to use that decree, no problem because we have uh, still have the room for the for the government debt because uh, the limit is sixty percent of GDP. But now we have only forty one percent, and if that we have a budget deficit this year, it four thousand right uh, for four hundred thousand. For 400 billion. Right. That means uh, 4 percent of GDP. So we mm -hmm. still have 45 percent of GDP still under the limit of 60 percent. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have a lot of room mm -hmm. to borrow the money if we need. Okay. The new energy minister insists there is no need to subsidize retail diesel prices, while the deputy minister of agriculture's first task will be resolving the rubber price. Richard Leader, turned Deputy Minister Natut Saigur, says one of his first few duties in the Ministry of Agriculture is to settle the price of rubber. If the price of rubber reaches 120 baht per kilogram, it will benefit the farmers. But the Ministry has to look at the marketing factors as well. There has not been specified the ceiling price. Yesterday, the cabinet approved a 15 billion baht budget for the ministry to purchase the rubber oversupply to push up the market price. Meanwhile, restructuring energy prices to conform with the world market and actual production cost is regarded as one of the most important tasks for Arak Chontranon, the new energy minister. The, this policy will affect the entire supply chain. It will increase the production cost. And then many economists say that the rise of energy prices may cause inflation. Iraq stated that there is no need to subsidize diesel to keep its retail price below 30 baht. Prime Minister Ying Lakshinabad is still in India for an official visit, promising more trade and investment between the two nations. Here's more. Prime Minister Ying Lakshinawad said today during her three-day state visit to India that Thailand was committed to working closely at every level with India to promote economic and political ties. Travelling with her on this trip are a host of businessmen interested in Indian Thai investment. Sharing a maritime boundary, Thailand and India have seen a significant expansion of trade during the past decade and the trend is still positive for both countries. And I think we have uh, committed to uh, work closely in every level and to increase on the uh, improve of the trade and investment and do something as a strategy with uh, Thailand and India in most of the benefit of both countries. So this is the first uh, start that has been for the long time and as the old friends to India. So very thank you on behalf of Thai government and Thai people. The India-Thailand Free Trade Agreement, or FTA, was signed in 2003, but until now, the details on goods, services and investments are waiting to be finalized. Other than trade, the two nations have cooperated in the security and defense fields as well, including joint exercises and coordinated patrolling. Thailand is a popular tourist destination for Indians, 
and is also home to a 150,000 strong Indian community. has signed or the naming armed forces chief of staff at the chairman of the joint working group working out details with Cambodia over Cambodian and Thai troop withdrawal from the Khao Pavihan area. Meanwhile, the second army commander maintains Cambodian and Thai troops deployed along the common border maintain close military ties. Tanasak Patimakon, the supreme commander today, made an inspection trip to the border area of Sisaket and Surin provinces. Lieutenant General Tawat Chai Samut Sakon, the second army commander, accompanied the general visiting Thai troops from the Suranari task force posted at the border area. There was earlier a report of a shooting accident in Prasat Takwai area of Surin province, where Sergeant Chirawat Pairo, who was shot in his left leg when his colleague accidentally fired a shot while cleaning his M16 rifle. The second army commander told Thai PBS that Cambodian and Thai troops posted on Pravihan maintained good ties, adding that there was no tension or conflict in Pumakua after the second army had Praputha Barami Sayamburi Pitak positioned in several military bases straddling the border. The commander said the area where the Buddha statues were positioned was inside Thai territory and as such, there was no need to seek approval from Cambodian side. A senior military officer disclosed to Thai PBS that the Supreme Commander had already signed the order naming General Warapong Sanganet, Armed Forces Chief of Staff, as Chairman of the Joint Working Group, or JWG, to work out details with Cambodia over redeployment of Cambodian and Thai troops from the demilitarized zone as stipulated by the order of the International Court of Justice in July 2011. The officer was hopeful that by the middle of next month, the JWG would have its first meeting aimed at setting up a time frame for the troop redeployment and the arrival of the international observers to monitor the troop withdrawal. Japan is facing its first trade deficit in over three decades in 2011. One of the main factors in causing the deficit in one of the world's strongest economies was last year's massive floods in Thailand. According to figures from Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Japan has locked its first annual trade deficit in more than 30 years at 2.49 trillion yen or a little over 1 trillion baht. Osamu Fujimura says the March earthquakes followed by the tsunami, the strong yen, weak exports, increased dependence of fossil fuels after the nuclear incidents and, of course, the recent floods in Thailand are to blame. The way out of this problem, according to Fujimura, is for Japan to foster new high-tech industries through reform of regulations and to build strategies to generate, to regenerate growth potential, leading to the creation of more domestic jobs. The chief cabinet secretary did not mention moving production bases out of Thailand. Deindustrialization is what Japan fear most. Economists, however, see things on the brighter side. More or less, uh, like a temporary factor, and uh, what I, what I, Japanese export is uh, is being hurt by strong yen and also the weak demand. But uh, and then we don't. Well, it is not that uh, we expect the U.S. and Europe to to uh, continue to uh, continue to suffer a weak growth for forever. Yes, they have a huge structural problem, but it should be solved a given time. So I would expect Japanese export should. Uh, regain its strength in a few years' time. Fast aging population also means a large number of senior citizens will be drawing on their savings. Running a current account deficit may mean trouble for Japan if it cannot pay the cost of financing its public debt, already twice the size of its 390 trillion yen economy and around 150 trillion baht without calling on overseas fund. We are still recording our staff for the Thai PBS English News Service. You can also email us to the address that we are showing on the screen. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS English News Service. I'm Rung Thip Chua Thank you for watching. Sawadee